Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to Let's Try Starbound. Starbound is a game that was just recently released under the beta early access rules on Steam, and uh, it is one of these, I'm going to call it survivalist adventure games. You know these games where you, you start off with basically nothing, and you're told, okay, go and punch some trees for resources, and then build a, a mining pick, and then build a house, and so on and so forth. Obviously, Minecraft falls under this. Uh, something like Don't Starve falls under this category uh, quite a bit. And of course, Terraria also falls under this. And obviously, Starbound is going to have a bit of a passing resemblance to Terraria because it is also a 2D sort of platformer mechanic for the game. Um, but there are a lot of pretty substantial differences between the two. And of course, there's no reason you can't just enjoy both games. One of the biggest differences between uh, Terraria and Starbound is very simply that uh, on Terraria, well, first of all, on Steam, Terraria is a 48 meg download and Starbound is 1.3 gigs. Now, that doesn't necessarily necessarily imply that much about content, except that the big difference between Starbound and Terraria is that you have a spaceship. You are not limited to just one planet. In fact, once you start to get a little bit of fuel on your ship, you can sit down. And so right now I'm on this planet here, which is an arid planet. It's actually a moon of this gas giant that I can't land on. It's got another moon over here, a desert one. This was actually a level three threat level. And if I zoom out with the right mouse button, I get the entire star system that I'm in. I can visit other planets here. And if I zoom out even more, I get the freaking galaxy. Uh, and all of this is procedurally generated. It's actually kind of cool in that, let's say you do find a cool planet. And like, let's say I'm really quite happy with this arid one. And you know, I discovered, oh, it's got some really valuable minerals right on the surface. Well, this planet has got coordinates and I can give these coordinates to someone else. And if they punch those in and then go there, it's still procedurally generated, but it uses this as the random key for the planet, the, the random seed. And so your buddy will get an exact duplicate of the planet and the minerals will be in the same place it's actually a very, very neat system. Game does have multiplayer. Uh, the cost of the game is, um, I think it's $15 on Steam, and you can get a four pack for $45. So basically, same as always, you pay you pay enough for three copies and you get a fourth one in there for free. Uh, and it does play great on multiplayer and it's huge amounts of fun. And uh, yeah, other than that, I mean, if you've played any of the other games or if you're aware of those other games, most of what will happen here is gonna be pretty familiar to you. And of course, I missed the shot there. There we go. So you can kill some of these monsters. Every planet will have different monsters and different trees, different plants completely. This is an arid planet, which actually is not going to be particularly pretty to look at. So you know what? Let's go ahead and go to one of the tree planets and see what we can do. I've done a, a fair bit of mining here. There's lots of things to find underground. Uh, I found some underground laboratories with weird objects like like sci-fi objects down there it is it is a science fiction game it'll start off pretty low level i mean i've got uh, an anvil and a little furnace here to do my crafting uh crafting is a huge part of these games of course so here's my basic crafting that i can do by myself uh so if i've got some uh, if i've cut down some trees then i can create some planks and then i can use planks to do different things build campfires hunting bows and so on and so forth but one of the first things you will do in the tutorial or sort of tutorial slash quests will lead you through is to build a wooden crafting table which unlocks more stuff over here so I get slightly more things that I can build including the furnace and an anvil so the furnace will let me smelt ore down into metal bars so I've got here I've got some copper ore for example that I've dug up so I can hit smelt and it will create copper bars for me and I can walk away while that continues to to work on things let me just pull that out for now and then I've got an anvil, anvil here which lets me make various metal worked items, including better picks, armor, and so on and so forth. In my inventory screen, you can see that I'm wearing armor here. And uh, I've got some combat statistics because there's some scary stuff out there. But let's go ahead and teleport up and we'll go to, uh, actually, well, maybe you should just explore a new planet entirely that I haven't been to. On your ship, you do have a storage locker that you can store extra things in. And actually, when I dug down deeply and I found that weird high-tech uh, laboratory. I found this cool chair in there. Um, now what I can do with this chair is move into my inventory and over here I've actually got a 3D printer that I can use and what I can do if I open up my my inventory the inventory close this crafting screen go away and the 3D printer what I can do is I can scan this chair now scanning this chair will destroy this one but once I've done that it's going to be in the database there we go the database of schematics in my 3D printer and one of the currencies that you accumulate, you find these pixels as you explore. And you can use the pixels to produce something in the 3D 
uh, the 3D printer here and get copies of objects. Now, if you can craft something naturally, then usually you just want to do that. But there are certain things that are just going to be more convenient to work this way or that you might not be able to craft. I don't know yet. I haven't explored the game deeply enough to know that if I can actually craft a cool chair in a normal fashion. But now it's in my 3D printer, so assuming I've got the pixels, then I can keep... Uh, I can produce a bunch of those. Here's the uh, the fuel for your ship. You can feed it um, a variety of goods. Early on, you can feed it wood. Each unit of wood gives you one unit of fuel. You can also feed it coal. Uh, each unit of coal gives you two units of fuel. But then there's more and more advanced fuel sources you can find later, like uranium and so on and so forth. Not that I've done that yet. I just you know checked a few spoilers. So let's go and sit down, and we'll explore the uh, the solar system here. That's another desert planet. Oh, forest planet. That sounds good. It is threat level 5. This is probably going to be the scariest planet that uh, I will have visited so far. I believe at the current state in the game, the levels can go all the way up to 100. But if, uh, if I recall correctly, I was just reading a blog post from the programmer. They're going to uh, just change the way the levels are reported. Instead of going from 1 to 100, it'll be from 1 to 10. Uh, it'll be the exact same content. They're just changing the, the number presentation and changing some of the combat math. But there's going to be just as much content, they say. Just different mechanics. Because right now, there's there's kind of a weird, awkward thing with the armor. Your armor here on your equipment, you basically want to make sure that the armor number is the same or higher as the level of the critters that you're attacking. Otherwise, you're going to take lots of extra damage. So while we're uh, still flying around, I can uh, exit this navigation screen and actually continue to walk around my ship and deploy things if I want. Um, I think I can deploy furniture in my ship, so I've got uh, like a bed here I could probably drop down. Or here we go, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab this blood bank uh, that I also found in that tech lab, and I'm just going to drop it on the ground. It doesn't do anything, it just, you know, looks cool. So we should be arriving in orbit around the planet momentarily. There it is, there's the planet. You know, I like these screens, I think they're, they're very nicely detailed. So let's go ahead and land and explore a little bit and uh, complete this let's try. So we're on Alpha New Set 684V. Um, and uh, it's actually quite nice and green. A every planet you can visit might have different grasses, different uh, actual dirt tiles. Uh, so some planets will have like purple rocks and it's like, oh, I've never seen purple rocks before. Let's bring those home. Uh, the trees are different on every single planet that I've seen so far. Uh, I think there's some amount of procedural generation. Ooh, there's a monster over there. Let's see if we can't uh, kill him from range. Oops, I missed. There you go. Oh, he's level six. Okay, I'm not doing very much damage to him. Switch to my sword. At least, it's, oh, he turned around. So at least the sword has decent knockback, although I'm still, woo, these are much tougher than any other planet so far. Let me clear these guys out and then we'll chop down some trees. There we are. So when you kill them, uh, oftentimes they will drop pixels. If you do kill them with your hunting bows, then uh, they're more likely to drop meat as far as I can tell. Let's grab our ax, chop down a tree. These are giant rose bushes with thorns, that's so cool. So it'll drop some raw wood, which you can then scoop up and then convert into planks later. Then I can use this pick here. This is coal, so let's actually grab that. Nice amount of surface materials on this planet. Sometimes you have to really go hunting around to find some of this, but very nice. Now, I think that higher level planets do have uh, a higher chance of finding certain types of goods, or at least the higher end goods. Like for example, I haven't run into uh, any platinum or uranium or plutonium or unobtainium or whatever the the highest level materials are so i expect they're on harder planets um and it may in fact be easier to find more goods on higher level planets in general like all this copper that i'm finding here i don't need tons of copper uh, to date and more uh, iron is really what i need a lot of right now but coal is always quite handy um i think that you can build a refinery later that will turn ore into pixels so you get a pretty decent money making engine there and one of the other things that goes on in this game if you explore planets we might find uh, we might find merchants, we might find entire villages, there's tons of NPCs of- Oh, this is not good, this guy's gonna drop on my head. Um, let's, uh, let's just box ourselves- Oh, that's cobblestone. Oh, this is more gravel, I don't want that. Here, let's just use some, uh, some sand over here and block ourselves in. Before this guy drops on my head. Yeah, so there's NPCs, you might find uh, kings and queens and other ship captains and yeah, and merchants for example, and people to interact with there. There's there's a lot of stuff and in fact, if you look at the screenshots of people's high level characters, it looks like a completely different game because they're playing like this whole, everything they're doing is, is super uh, sci-fi-ish and, and scientific and really, really well developed. Um, and you know, it doesn't look all primitive like my current game here. Oh, there's actually some iron on the surface right there next to the coal. Okay, well, we're clearly going to have to bust out of here. I don't know where the safest way for me to do this and then not die is. Let's drop a little bit of gravel down under me. 
Dude. Oh, good. He's actually trapped. He can't... I don't think he can touch me there. Whew. All right. Which is important for some of the higher level uh, monsters later on. Yeah, I really need... I sh so should not be here. These guys are not taking enough damage from the bow. Uh, the iron bow is one of the very first things. Because first you build a, a hunting bow. But then you're going to want to upgrade to an iron bow ASAP. Because early on, that iron bow can one-shot all the creatures that you run into. And it becomes a perfect tool. But... Um, Apparently that no longer applies to me. You get these plant fibers here. These are actually really good. You can make bandages and rope out of them, which is good. These little containers here, if you pop them, they will drop some pixels. And even though uh, there are six races to choose from, and I'm playing the robot race called the Glitch. And uh, as far as I can tell, at least right now, all the races are mechanically the same. They just look different. You've got two genders. You can play a boy robot or a girl, girl robot, for example. So there's humans. There's ape people, plant people, um, three-eyed people, like, and there, there's a couple others, I can't remember what they are, but uh, they do look interesting, and they're cute, and you can do them yourselves, and again, in multiplayer, you can play that, and, um, you know, show off the way that you look, I, I actually look slightly different than I'm supposed to, just because I've got the, uh, the armor on, my head is actually like the Cyberman hel head, which I quite like, and then I put the, ar the helmet on, and now I look like a robot viking, which sounds like an excellent premise for a video game. Someone should make a robot viking game. Yeah, they're level 6. And my weapon is just not high enough uh, to deal with this. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think it's time to leave. Boop. So the game does not have permadeath, but when you die, um, you get uh, rebuilt on your ship. Rebuilt or reborn or recloned, depending on your race. Um, and it takes 20% of your pixels away. So it can be quite costly to die. Uh, so avoid it if you can. But yeah, if I look at my weapon, uh, oh, up here, what's the armor penetration on this? Oh, I don't get the stats here. That's interesting. Well, I get, I know when I'm doing the crafting, I can see the, the stats of my weapon. Oh, I can see it here. Oh, maybe my bow doesn't have any, uh, no, there's no statistics. So my sword here, the armor penetration of one, that means it's really meant to deal with level one monsters. So I really have to craft myself a better sword so I can deal with the stuff on these little planets. But, um, you know, this is just a little sampler of the game. Let me go back to my uh, friendlier planet and we'll do some underground exploration here because this is just a little too dangerous. Um, where was that forest? Level nine, I'm not going there. Level 10. Level oh, I've never been to a snow planet. Let's go to a snow planet, guys. It's only level one. Uh, but that, that'll be easy for the video. Then I don't have to worry about getting slaughtered. Huh. Spooling FTL drive. At some point, I'm going to rewatch my own video and pause here because I really want to see what this uh, this text looks like. Because uh, it looks like program code, but I keep catching little tiny lines of, I think, little jokes and things in here. And I'm quite curious to see exactly what it's all saying. Mm-hmm. All right. I know I've got the uh, the in-game sound quite low here. I could probably bring it up at this point. Because I actually think the music is pretty nice. Come on. Can I not? Oh, I gotta hit the... We'll play with higher sound effects for a little bit. There we are. Well, right now all you're hearing is the ship sounds, which is not particularly exciting. But once we get down to the planet, it'll sound nice. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. What else do I have? Cool desk. Oh, I, I found a wheelbarrow. Uh, when I landed on a planet the first time, I actually uh, spawned really close to a merchant, which was awesome. I was like, oh, this is going to be really cool. And then a monster came nearby, and I swung my sword. Swang? Swung? Swung my sword at the monster, and uh, accidentally hit the merchant, and then he aggroed, so I had to kill him. Sorry. Look at this. Nice little tundra planet. All right, let's go see what we can see here. Alpha new set 6843B. I mean, the first part should all be the same, because we're in the same uh, solar system here. Uh, we got some water. Actually, we could show up some of the, the uh, construction, too. Is this, like, snow blocks? Slush. Can I build with this? I probably can, actually. Let's make myself a little house. I left all my major crafting stuff on the other planet, though, so I'm sort of kind of going to have to start from scratch. Oh, my God. Is my screen fogging up? Oh, I'm freezing to death! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. Um, six. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I forgot about that. I'm going to need to build the fire right away. Oh, no. So, uh, there's the death animation, or the rebirth animation for a robot. It is different depending on what race you are. Oh, I forgot that heat would be a problem. All right, let's drop a torch on the ground right away. Uh, what is it? Oh, six. Okay, that'll keep me warm. No, it won't keep me warm enough. Uh, let's quickly, let's make a campfire. Yeah, okay, so I'm not freezing super fast anymore, but it's still not good. 
All right, campfire. There we go. Now the heat meter is going up. I think it was also telling me I was hungry. I've got some cooked alien meat around, so let's gnaw on that. There, okay. Oh no, I'm full. As I was hungry before, and then I died. Now, how am I going to explore an ice planet if I keep freezing to death? See, I've moved away from my fire. I'm already getting cold. All right, let's let's make ourselves a little bit of a house. We'll build an igloo. Listen, I'm Canadian. I know how to do this. Eh, reinforcing stereotypes. I'm freezing to death. Oh my god. Okay, let's go back to my fire. Warm up. Brrr. Okay, where's the uh, where's my snow? Oh, I got a bunch of silver ore. I forgot about that. It's gonna be very handy. Let's uh, drop the snow in that slot and go to work. So uh, you can normally the blocks are being placed in the four by four, but if you hold shift, you'll do one by one. So then we can get that. Maybe something like that. We'll need a door, of course. Uh, how big do I want to do this? There we go. Something like that. And um, which means actually I need a crafting table again. So build that. So now, where's my crafting table? Right here. Oh, I already had the one in my inventory. Let's put that in the corner. And then we're going to craft a door. Wooden door. Should be fine. Takes 20 wooden planks. Construct that. There's my door. Boom. And then what I'm also going to do, if I hold, uh, if I use my right mouse button, then I'll actually build in the background. And I should be able to build, yeah, the background there, although I ran out of snow. I might not have enough snow to build my whole background. Metal, gravel, yeah, fill all this in. Keep ourselves nice and warm. Oh, yeah, that's not enough. Okay, we'll finish it off with some some dirt. The colors won't match, which is actually going to drive me crazy. So you know what? Grab the pickaxe, and if I right-click, I can dig out a background. So I'll do that. We're going to get rid of the slush. Whoops. No, no chest. I'm not. I'm not smashing you anymore. Oh, oh, I forgot to, uh, I didn't actually finish this part. Maybe we'll smash that. There we go. Now, I think, use my man or matter manipulator to get rid of the fire here. Oh, no, I still will get cold. I don't think you get quite as cold quite as fast. No, apparently I'm wrong. I'm getting cold quite quickly. A couple of torches in here. Yeah, still not enough. We need a proper fire. Freezing to death less quickly. We've got that. We can build a furnace too, probably. Let me see here. Um, furnace, stone furnace. I need, I need a campfire in my inventory for that. That's right. So, matter manipulator, pick this up, and then build the, uh, the furnace. There. Campfire, cobblestone. Craft that, and the furnace provides a nice amount of heat. Oh my God! I almost froze to death there in that time. Ah! Oh! It's never happened to me. I mean, you do get cold at night, um, no matter where you are. Well, actually, I'm not sure if that's the case on desert planets, honestly. I don't think I can go exploring on this planet. I, I can start digging down. I might not be as cold under the ground, though. Nope, I'm getting cold. I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to come back to this planet when I've got some, uh, some warm clothing. Wow. Okay, well, if I'm picking off, let's bring this and this with me. I'll leave the rest of the house there. Grab everything, and oh yeah, I gotta go outside. Teleport up to the ship. Where it's oh, well. No, I still have to show the, the mining, so we'll find some. No, not level ten. Come on. Level one forest planet. There, we're gonna go to a totally friendly planet, and then we will showcase mining. Let me drop the volume again, just to make sure it's not overwhelmingly loud. Something like that. Okay. Accept, and then back. Boom, boom, boom. So, uh, one of the first items you start off with is this matter manipulator, uh, which basically, it will do anything. It will act, you know, you can do mining with it. It's very slow. This is your, your Omni tool that will do all the things. So the first thing you do is you sort of do a little bit of mining with your matter manipulator, and then you build yourself a stone pick. And then you use your stone pick to mine faster and hopefully find some copper. Upgrade yourself to a copper pickaxe. Also, I can uh, repair this uh, pickaxe now. They never break, but if they go down to zero health, they just start to go slower and slower. So what I can do is pick up this copper ore and then right-click on the pickaxe a couple of times and repair it to full. That's actually one of the things that is not obvious. I need to make like a tip video. A starbound tip video to tell people cool tricks like that. So we'll go to this, uh, this forest planet. 
Ooh, like psychedelically colored forest planet. Oh no, that's the one in the background. It's actually a forest moon. I'll call it Endor. There we are. I think oh maybe I hadn't done any exploration on this planet. No. Alright, okay, we're gonna we're gonna try to dig straight down. Do I have enough torches? That's actually a big question mark. Torches, yeah, I can I've got enough material for a ton of them. Let's make a, a set of twenty. Although you'll see you get times two torches, so this is actually gonna make me forty torches. And let's go ahead and dig down there. Let's get some pixels. Dig down some. So we'll get dark. Now, early on when you're still near the surface, you can actually right click the background and dig it out, and as long as it's day, you'll get some light there. And it's actually enough, if you do that, you can expose enough of the background, you'll be able to teleport out again. Ooh, a little bit of iron. Ooh, this is gonna be a nice planet, actually. Not tons of iron. Usually I don't stop to mine individual little tiles like this. Oh, it's raining! Look! We're getting weather! I saw lightning in the background. Mm-hmm. So we got some copper there. But we'll try to dig down. We'll see if we can't find, um, like, a cavern or something. Because there's quite a lot of exciting stuff. In fact, usually the first thing you do is when you get to a new planet, run around on the surface a whole bunch because oftentimes in uh, these little natural caves, someone will have stuck a chest somewhere and it'll be full with, you know, pixels or tools or other resources that you might want. So I'm just going to dig through the dirt here. It's a lot faster than digging through the rock. Um, the rock like this may have a higher percentage of minerals. I'm not sure if that's true. Um... But it, it takes so much longer to dig through. And you can kind of see the, the light will shine through the, the blocks to a certain extent. So you can dig alongside rock deposits and then look for mineral deposits that way. Now some planets have lots of underground caverns and some don't seem to have very many. Probably you're going to hit one here that doesn't have very much at all and be very dull. It really depends. But the deeper you go, the more the rock types change. Could be digging diagonally as well to see what we'll hit, but I just want to try to see as get as deep as we can and then see what it looks like. Now, unlike Minecraft, uh, lights do not stop monsters monsters from spawning. They simply will not spawn on the screen with you. Oh, there we go, Another rock layer. Um, so you don't have to go and like spam torches all over the place. It's not going to prevent monsters from spawning. I'm just going to try to dig around this. Oh, we got some sand here. The sand, the loose sand and loose gravel. If I hit N or use the magnifying glass here, I can click here and find out what it is. Fine glittering sand could probably be made into glass. Really? Oh yeah, you can make windows. And yeah, it is fine sand, so this will be all, all physics-y here. As we dig down, it'll start to collapse. And it can technically drown you, although I've always been able to sort of like dig around myself or dig above me and I've never actually drowned. It is really nice if you've got minerals like that in sand then as you dig it out, it'll automatically just sort of pop out and drop, and you'll be able to collect things quite quickly. And it's just fun to dig through. There's water as well, and loose gravel. I think we're going to go over here, because this is dirt. Not as fast as digging through sand, but still faster than digging through uh, stone. So I don't know if we're actually going to run into anything particularly interesting on this journey, but if we can, it'll be a nice way to close out the video. And actually, if I can find some silver, I'll do that. I really should have upgraded to a silver pick. I've got everything I need to do it now. I've got tons of silver for my last mining expedition. And then we'd be able to dig through this even faster. But that would have required me to put in some thought into uh, what I was going to do for my video. Anyway, um, I never really got into a lot of other of these sort of uh, survivalist adventures uh, games. Uh, mostly because I'm... I don't know, I guess I'm not very artistic and I don't like spend a whole lot of time making really cool buildings and towns like some of these people do in uh, in Minecraft and whatnot. Um, I wonder if the snow would melt if I dropped it here. Nope. Uh, but we definitely need to keep building some little platforms here. There is falling damage, although you do have to fall a pretty far away before you actually take falling damage, and I've never died from it. But, ooh, we've got blue vine here. Now, that doesn't really make a difference, you know, it's plant fibers, plant fibers, plant fiber. It's really handy, you can make uh, ropes and bandages. I guess we'll use the axe for this, I think that makes the most amount of sense. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Whoa, look at this background! Is it just going to tell me it's like stone? Solid material made from the remains of fallen creatures. Oh, this is bone! Green bone. I guess I didn't need a platform there. There's my plant fiber. We got some water. Oh, this is actually a really interesting little area here. You can drown even if you're a robot.
And the big problem is you don't get light down here. Hmm. Um, I guess all we can do is just kind of keep digging this way. Oh, the bone is relatively easy to go through, which is good. Oh, it's, uh, this stuff's actually called plant matter stone. Some of the tech strings aren't still aren't quite developed all the way yet. Oh, there's a lot of iron. Um, again, you know, still you know very much in beta, uh, but uh, the game's been very stable for me. I can I definitely say that. I did get one crash at one point when I was trying to record some footage earlier, and um, I think it was mostly like Windows tabbed me out while recording in Fraps, and that will pretty much just crash any game. Uh, there's just a really weird video thing going on. So I'm only saying that it happened as a disclaimer because other than that, the game has seemed rock solid. And, uh, and and shockingly fun, because you're always like, oh, I gotta dig out just, you know, just a little bit more digging so that I can get the thing to make me dig faster so that I can find, oh my god, there's gold over there, hold on. Whoa, 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 stop the bus. I'm gonna grab that. I haven't found a whole lot of gold yet. And I don't entirely know everything you're gonna do with it. Um... I don't think I even have really the capacity to craft anything out of gold yet. I have to, <laughs> I have to beat the UFO boss so I can get the molten core so that I can build the uh, proper metal crafting station and build some more advanced stuff. But uh, I haven't been able to fight it yet. And some the people who have played this game will be like, "Oh yeah, the UFO, sure." And then other people will be like, "What UFOs? Yeah." I mean, it's a space game. You're not the only person with a spaceship here. There are things going on. Oh, I think I saw a fish in the water over here. By the way, you can, uh, if you want, you can hold shift. I'm not doing it here. I'll demonstrate it over here. You can hold shift and then just mine out a single block at a time if you want. If you want to do some precision mining. Very, very handy trick. Let's go see the water over here. Do I have my flashlight with me? I don't think so. I think I left it on the ship. Oh yeah, I found all these colored vials. I don't know what they do. There's colored liquid that I found somewhere. It might be purely decorative, but again, I found it in a cool lab deep, deep, deep underground in one of my most intense mining uh, operations. It was completely enclosed, like, in the core of the earth. I'd have no idea what was going on there. Hey, right, let's go pop this underground lake and, and look at the water physics. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. Water physics. Put out my torch, and I might just drown. There's going to be an oxygen meter that'll come up in a second here. There it is. That's how long you can breathe underwater. Boom. Anyway, um, I have to find my way out of here at some point, but this is my, my quick look at Starbound. And it's a game that I have been, even though it's not the sort of game that I normally play a whole lot of, I've really been enjoying myself. And I'm looking forward to see what the late game is like and what the, uh, uh, the next set of beta patches will bring. Each one is adding new features and rebalancing the gameplay. And I think this is going to be a very popular game. So it is available on Steam as well as many other websites. Check out the link down below. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.